Hello friends welcome to the Civil Engineer YouTube channel. In this video we will be learning about strip foundations, strip footing, what is the strip foundation, type of strip foundation. When strip footing is used. And last part we will see the analysis and steps of design. Strip foundations, or strip footings, are a type of shallow foundation that is used to provide a continuous, level, or sometimes stepped, strip of support to a linear structure such as a wall or closely spaced rows of columns built centrally above them. Strip footings are commonly used as foundations of load-bearing walls. Strip foundation consists of a continuous strip formed centrally under load-bearing walls. This continuous strip provides a base for walls. The width of this strip is as necessary to spread the load on an area of subsoil capable of supporting the load without undue compaction. Normally, the size and position of the strip are directly related to the overall width of the wall built on top of it and it must be three times the width of the wall the concept is that the load is transmitted at 45 degrees from the base of the wall to the soil and the depth of this foundation must be equal to or greater than the overall width of the wall nowadays concrete is mostly used for this foundation as it can readily be placed spread and leveled in foundation trenches and it develops adequate compressive strength as it hardens to support the load on foundations. But, bricks are also used sometimes instead of concrete. This footing has some other names like wall footing, spread footing, and continuous footing. Types of Strip Foundation Based on their characteristics, there can be two types of strip foundation, they are as follows. Deep Strip Foundation The most common type of foundation is the Deep Strip Foundation, which is also the cheapest provided the soil conditions are suitable. A reinforced concrete strip supports the walls. The trench can be of any depth, but it should be at least 40 inches meters deep and 24 inches meters broad. Concrete should have a minimum depth of 9 inches Wide Strip Foundation Wide Strip Foundation is seen in areas having soils with low load-bearing capacity. The regular strip foundation cannot be implemented in low-quality soils. The excessive widening and deepening of the construction to prevent wall shearing is not economically justified. The use of reinforced concrete to construct a foundation can be a proper solution. Reinforcing bars give the foundation a tensile property allowing the entire structure to bear strain and compression. When strip footing is used? Commonly, this footing is used as a foundation of load-bearing walls. But, the soil should have good bearing capacity. If the bearing capacity of the soil isn't good, you can still use strip footing. In that case, you need to build wider footings with reinforced concrete. Strip foundation is preferred for low-rise to medium-rise residential buildings. In some cases, they are used to support a row of closely spaced columns. Analysis and Design Procedure of Wall Footing Wall footing should be designed to safely support structural or non-structural walls and transmit and distribute the loads to the soil in such a manner that the load-bearing capacity of the soil is not surpassed. In addition to avoiding excessive settlement and rotation and maintain sufficient safety against sliding and overturning. Analysis of Wall Footing The simple principles of beam action apply to wall footings with only minor modifications figure shows a wall footing with the forces acting on it. 
If bending moments were computed from these forces, the maximum moment would be found to occur at the middle of the width. Tension cracks formed under the face of the wall rather than in the middle. The maximum bending moment, mu, in footings under concrete walls is computed using equation. Where? Chu, ultimate bearing capacity of soil under wall footing which is equal to the ultimate distributed load divided by required area of footing. B, width of wall footing. A, width of the wall supported by wall footing. The vertical shear force vu can be calculated on section 2 to 2 located at distance d from the face of the wall. Equation can be used to compute shear force. Development length calculation is based on the section of maximum moment. Where? D. Distance between wall face and location of vertical shear force application and it is equal to the effective depth of the wall footing section. Step number 1, estimate the thickness of footing, H. Estimate footing thickness which should meet shear requirement and provide minimum effective depth of 150 mm. Step number 2, calculate weight of fill plus weight of concrete, W, which is calculated from the following equation. Step number 3, calculate effective bearing capacity, QE which is calculated from the following equation. Step number four, calculate bearing area, which is calculated from the following equation. Bearing area equals service load, dead load plus live load, divided on QE. Step number 5. Calculate design pressure on base of footing due to factored loads, chu. Chu equals factored load divided on bearing area. Step number 6. Calculate the critical shear. Critical shear equals Chu multiplication B multiplication, K minus D. Only one-way shear is significant in wall footing, hence determining. Critical shear at distance D from the face of support. Step number 7. Check the shear capacity. Shear capacity equals Phi multiplication 2 second root FC multiplication B multiplication D. Since critical shear less than shear capacity, the footing depth is okay. If critical shear is larger or considerably smaller than phi shear capacity then chose a new thickness and repeat the previous steps. Step number 8. Calculate maximum moment. The maximum factored moment is calculated at critical section. For a footing supporting masonry wall, Critical section is located between the edge and the middle of the wall which is calculated from the following equation. For masonry wall maximum moment is equals the following equation. And for concrete wall maximum moment is equals the following equation. Step number 9. Calculate steel area. Now, using trial and success method for determining steel area, which is calculated from the following equation. Step number 10, minimum reinforcement and maximum spacing check, which is calculated from the following equations. Minimum reinforcement for less than grade 60 is equal to 0 0.0020 multiplication B multiplication H. And for grade 60 is equal to 0 0.0018 multiplication B multiplication H. And also, maximum spacing check equals 3 multiplication H. Step number 11, bars spacing placement. 
main bars, spacing equals a b multiplication 12, divided on a s. Distribution bars, spacing equals a b multiplication 12, divided on a s. a s equals area of steel. a b equals area of bar to be used. Step number 12 is drafting. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my YouTube channel.